welcome to episode 21 of the Wood Knot Carpenter, Long Time No See. I'm inside this morning because I'm setting up my router to use my Jasper Circle Guide that I've purchased some time ago and I've never used it. So I thought, hey, this is a perfect time to show you guys how it works and we can learn how to do it together since I've never done it. So I'm setting up my router, I'm inside right now. The shop is warming up right now, I have the heater going. But before we get started, I thought you might like to take a look at what I have been working on. So let me grab the camera and show you what I've been up to. This is my layout as it stands right this minute. Not a whole lot to look at, but I've made good progress. Having the wood shop out in the garage has been just awesome for getting this bench work completed. Let me just give you a quick tour. All of these tracks here are actually functioning. The loco is in there somewhere hiding. Oh yeah, there he is in there. All these tracks are powered and the loco is running. This hole right here is where I'm gonna have a lake. Here's the bottom of the lake that I cut out. I just drilled through with a drill right there, inserted my jigsaw blade and cut this out. And then I ran a half inch roundover bit all the way around that. So that was big fun. So that's where my lake's gonna go. Right here is where I'm gonna have a turntable which is why I need to cut this hole out of here. So that's why we're gonna take a look at that new tool that I'm gonna be showing you how to use here in a second. And so I've been laying out the switches and the yard. I decided to build my own cork pads for my switches so I can precisely place them. I've been using these templates right here to get my switches laid out in the correct position so everything will line up. The yard is small, it's only gonna have one, two, three, four, five uh, lines going through the yard. So that's what I've been up to. But since this is primarily a woodworking site, I know you guys don't wanna spend any, too much time looking at the model railroad, but let's go on out to the shop and I'll show you how to use that hole cutting tool. Okay, here's how you set this up according to the instructions that they have printed on the card here when you buy it. This plastic guide here came wrapped on here and they gave you an assortment of screws and things that go with it. So evidently what you're supposed to do is take your router base off. I purchased a new one because this is the old one that came off of here because I had to drill out this large hole. You remember when I was showing you how to how I did the top on my workbench, I had to drill this out for that big inch and a half blade to go through there on the on the router bit. So I decided to just go ahead and purchase another uh, base for my router. But in, in this case, neither one of these is used. So what you're supposed to do is take this guide pin and insert it inside of the collet like so. So you put this in here and I'm just gonna hand crank it down, hand tighten it. Don't really need to be real tight right now. And then once it's in there, with the bevel sides of the holes up, you push this down here like so, and you simply spin it until you see the holes in your base lined up with all these pre-drilled pre holes that they have on here. So you put that on there. Let me see. There's one lining up there, but that's only one. So I gotta go to, I see all of them here. Let me see. Oh, here we go. So one, two, three. And then what you do 
is get these screws that they give you or the ones that actually came off of your base when you were lining it up and you go ahead and screw this down. So let me go ahead and do that and then I'll get right back to you. Here's the plate mounted. I used the original screws they gave me. They did give me some that fit, but they were a little bit longer and they seemed a little bit tight to me and I didn't want to mess up the threads inside the bottom of the, of the plate. So I used the original screws that hold on the plastic base. But now that it's all set up, it's aligned up perfectly. So when I put my quarter inch router bit, it should fit snugly exactly through the base of this plate. And then what you do, you use these holes to set up your, your guide for, for actually cutting the hole. So for right here, it says if you want a hole that's eight and 15 sixteenths of an inch, you have to find that hole. So you just go down here to eight inches right here. Then you come over here to this scale and you go up 15, 16, so you find it. So there it is there. And then you, so you got, and then here's the eight inch hole. So it's right there is your one. The biggest hole you can make on here is 18 inches and 3 16. This hole right here is linearly, 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 is that a word guys? Linearly farthest away from this center of this pivot guide right there, this hole right here. And then there it's and it comes in here. So I need to make a hole that is six inches and one eighth of an inch. So here's my eighth of an inch right here. Go over here to the six inch slot. So that's my guide hole right there that I have to use to cut the hole that I need to go on the workbench top or the top of my layout. So let's go out to the shop now. It should be all warmed up out there and let's see how this thing works. I am zoomed in here guys so you can see this. I've got the quarter inch uh, double fluted blade in there and because I use this template when I push this down you see it comes exactly through that hole so hopefully I will be damaging the base so everything's lined up perfectly as you can see and now we just have to set up the pin to drill the hole let me move this out of the way for just a second and what you're supposed to do we're going to actually drill the hole in this board right here but this is the backup board because you have to be able to go all the way through this and into this to cut the hole out successfully. Otherwise, you're going to be like Wile E. Coyote sawing off the limb of a tree that he's sitting on. You can't saw on this with no backup. So I think that's how we have to do. So I'm going to get some clamps and I'm going to maybe clamp this down here like this and then we'll give it a shot. I switched out the back out or the backup board guys because I found this big piece of plywood that I had cut on before. You can see some uh, marks in here from my track saw so we're going to use this as a waste. I went to a larger piece of scrap to make sure that it was wide enough to accommodate the hole. So let me get it set up and I think we'll be ready to go. So locate where you want the center of your hole to be. Drill all the way through the workpiece. Make sure you don't go all the way through until your top of your workbench. So I got some tape on here so I don't go too far. And then the pin, one eighth inch pin, goes into that hole. Like so. I can already see a problem here, guys. So because I can imagine or I can see that some of the guide holes that you may want to use, four inch hole, five inch, are actually covered by the diameter of the base. So, 
that would render this tool not very useful. I think what I'm going to try to do is take these three screws out and rotate the base to where this flat area is and hopefully that will uncover the hole that I need but I don't see how this would be very useful for instance if you had to drill drill a hole that was five and and five eighths wide because the base of my router covers up that pin you'd have to push this pin all the way down to where it just barely came through this and maybe that's what you're supposed to do I'll see. I moved the setup to the other side of the bench so I can take advantage of this channel here in the workbench. I'm not going to say I planned it so, but this channel has really come in handy, guys, in this workbench as a relief area for drilling through and sawing through. So I think what I'm going to do is just go straight down all the way through both pieces. This is just an experiment. So now I'm all the way through. I'm gonna take the guide pin and I'm gonna push it all the way through until just about an eighth of an inch sticks up. Just enough for me to get the base on there so it just touches the bottom. Hopefully that'll be enough. We'll find out in a second. Okay, it looks like it's going to work, guys. I have it on the proper hole. The guide pin is pushed all the way through, just barely making contact with the base. Again, I don't know how you'd line up these other holes if your base is interfering with them. You just have to use this method, but it seems like it's gonna pivot around there okay. I have the depth set uh, just right here, so if I push this thing down, or when I push it down, it should cut through the 5 8 inches and into this, and not the top of my workbench, so say a prayer for me. Let's get going here. Let me get the electricity hooked up, and we'll give it a shot. I tapped the guide pin in just a little bit more to make sure that this sits flat on here because it was rocking a little bit because it was touching the base. So here goes. There you go. That's how it's done. That hole should be six and one eighth inches across. Here's the waist. I didn't cut through my tabletop. I'm happy. Upon measuring, guys, you can see that the hole is six 
and one eighth inches, just a little bit over, but close enough. I think this whole process might work a little bit better if the drill bit you're using is a spiral up cut, because that means all this sawdust will come up out of the hole. I noticed that this was kind of slowing me down when I was drilling. That's the only alteration I would make. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up and make the cut on the top of the layout model and keep on going. Let me take you back in though and show you my next woodworking project on the computer. Since this channel was a woodworking channel, guys, I want to stay with that theme. So I wanted to show you my next project that I'm going to be starting here pretty soon. This is going to be a coffee table that's going to go between the sofa and the love seat in our living room. The top is a little bit misshapen in that the back is wider than the front because if this is the TV over here, this sofa kind of faces the TV at an angle and this one comes in at the other angle, so it's going to sit. I actually saw this design in a um, furniture store and I really liked it, so I thought maybe I would uh, see if I could pull it off. So that's how it's going to be, looking straight down on it. And then these legs down here are just going to be a cross joint. So it's just going to be notched. Let me see if I can hide one of them so you can see it. Like so. So it's going to be notched here, right there. So you can see how that works there. And then the other cross member is notched going across the other way. And then the same situation up here underneath. And then these legs are going to lean in at about a five degree angle to support the whole mechanism. So I'm going to be starting on this uh, pretty soon. I say within the next couple of weeks, I'm going to get the top laminated up and then I'm going to get the legs cut out. And when I have all the pieces ready to go, I'll record it in a video and put it on the on the channel so you guys can check it out, okay? Okay, so thanks for hanging out with me today, guys. I really appreciate you taking the time, some of your time to stop by and see what I'm up to. I'm gonna be continuing to work on the layout and if you really wanna see what I'm doing on this, go to my website, www.goodnewsonly.com. That's where I have some information on what I'm doing there. And I also share my faith in the Lord Jesus there too. So uh, if you have a relationship with God and you pray once in a while, so do I. So you can check out some of my writings there. But in the meantime, you guys take care out there. And I'll see you next time on episode 22 of The Wood Not Carpenter.